on this Sunday, the 8th day of July 2012. I am your host, Alex Jones. This is a very special transmission today. We have Dan Fight, a journalist who's broken a lot of big stories, joining us from Minnesota. He's the guy that ferreted out a public army field manual, much of them are classified, dealing with gun confiscation. They call it gun evacuation when they take it out of your house or your gun store. And pulling triggers on demonstrators, rioters, anybody out. Not just microwave guns, not just sound cannons like we saw in Pittsburgh. And my own reporter arrested for being on a hilltop at a park, videotaping police beating women and uh, men in the heads with billy clubs who weren't even protesting. So we're going to be going over all of that with him coming up for about 30 minutes in the second hour. In the meantime, there are news reports like this one that is public documents put out by major universities where Bill and Melinda Gates pays for experiments to genetically modify humans in gut flora. We've talked a lot about this in the past, but this is why through the GMO we're being weakened where we can't eat regular wheat and corn and things because it's been GMO'd. And then we've got to go to them to be altered and are now dependent on them. In fact, here's the link right here if you're watching on PrisonPlanet.tv to the actual university reports where they get into all of the funding of this uh, that is happening. So that's the type of information that we are dealing with. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. We are being implanted with the vaccines and the GMO food with systems that are going to make it impossible for us to live without the, quote, cures, which won't be cures, the treatments uh, that Big Pharma and Big Agra delivered us. This is the model. They make you sick, they soft kill you, and then give you the, quote, solution. It bankrupts the social welfare safety net. They socialize it in the name of saving it to actually further bankrupt it and then dictate what you eat, what you drink, what you do, and then block alternative treatments, vitamins, and minerals so that you can't rehabilitate yourself or fight back without their systems. This is the takeover plan. Mike Adams is going to be sitting in tomorrow. I know we'll be talking about it. And again, that's from Salem-News.com. But if you go down... Uh, to the link. It has the university link right there. Do you see it? And uh, you can read over it right there. This is a fact. In fact, Aaron Dykes has pointed this out for a long time that it's the it's the vaccines. And see the link right up there, second line? That's what you go to right there. Second line down. That's it right there. And that's the link. And they're going to engineer food. They're going to put vaccines, quote, in the store milk that, oh, make it where the children's gut flora works better. Oh, and Bill Gates is going to release mosquitoes onto us that forcibly inoculate us and have all sorts of Trojan horses built into them, just like all of the electronics we're buying, they admit, has government Trojan horses and back doors in it. These are psychopaths running things. You have to understand things from their perspective. Okay. We've got even Forbes admitting that the Obama UN gun treaty will register and then ban most guns. Even Forbes has analyzed it and said, yeah, this is uh, this is an absolute gun grab. It's happening, just like the healthcare thing, written by the insurance companies. We've got a big surprise for you coming up today. I'm going to be breaking down the ultimate secret, what the globalists don't want you to know. We're also going to look back at the Obama deception and see how it predicted what was going to happen and what is going to happen in the future as well. Stay with us. Ladies and gentlemen, listening all over the United States and across the world, thank you so much for tuning into this worldwide transmission. We are live. It is the eighth day of July 2012. I am your host, Alex Jones. We're going to be here for the next two hours. Coming up at the start of the next hour, we have a Minnesota journalist who reports there at the Capitol, joining us to break down an Army manual that he's written a report about. It's up at Infowars.com. Army manual outlines plan to kill protesters in the United States. No warning shots will be fired, and they train for gun confiscation nationwide. And, of course, the Secretary of the Army came out a few months ago in the Council on Foreign Relations 
bi-monthly uh, magazine and said that they will deploy 4,000 troops uh, for combat and call in airstrikes against the American people in every city. Now, why is this happening? And why are they trying to get the military and police trained to have war with the American people? Very elementary. Foreign banks got a beachhead in 1913 with the private Federal Reserve Act. They didn't get the income tax going, though, even though they passed it that same year, until the 1940s, claiming it was a war tax. Now we're totally taken over, but it's fraudulent is the good news. And now in hundreds of publications a month, Financial Times of London, Wall Street Journal, they say foreign banks have captured America, but it's a good thing. Now, three and a half years ago, when Obama had been in office just about a month, I made a film called The Obama Deception, predicting everything he would do. And he's gotten most of this done. Most of this done. It's a two-hour film. It's free online. Type in The Obama Deception. Seen over 40 million times on YouTube, Google, and other platforms. One version's got 11 million views on YouTube. Okay, the point is that you need to go see this film right now after the show today, and you need to send it to your entire email list, Twitter, and Facebook, because it lays out exactly what would happen. I'm going to play a little bit of it now, a part of it in the next segment, then I'm going to get to a new report that we're going to premiere here on the Sunday radio show, dealing with the globalists and what they have in store for us and how we can defeat them. It's titled, Humanity's Greatest Secret, Dreams of the Universe. The video is posted, red-linked, at the top of InfoWars.com right now. So bookmark it. We're going to premiere the audio of that. Uh, three weeks in the making here. Very important report here on the radio coming up at the bottom of the hour. Now, this is from the last 20 minutes or so of the Obama deception that is voiceover heavy. We've got the interviews and the on-the-street stuff in the first two-thirds. This is the last 20 minutes or so where I go through the goals and how it was a banking coup d'etat over the U.S. and Europe, how they would then invade Africa under AFRICOM. And again, we're captured. Are the Russians good, the government? No. Are the Chinese government good? No. Is North Korea good? No, they're horrible. The point is, the globalists get us to give up our rights saying, oh, we're fighting these foreign enemies. We've been captured by a banking cartel that is announcing armed drones against us, checkpoints, TSA on the streets, and the military to be used against us. After all these years, I warned you from my military sources and drills we went into and things I snuck into and got arrested covering and beat up covering and almost went to prison over covering. I had them try to set me up one time, had troops jump out and start lighting fires and saying I'd done it in Florida. After all of this to bring you that this was being set up in secret, long-term program, bigger than Obama. Now you notice Mitt Romney is saying, oh, the uh, health care thing's okay, it's not a tax, and siding with Obama. This is really starting to wake people up because it's a globalist agenda bigger than Obama. And that's what the Obama deception breaks down. It's all in high gear. So here is part of the Obama deception. We'll go to break, come back, play some more. Remember, this is three and a half years. In fact, it's over four years old, actually, or, or right at four. Before he was even president-elect, I knew he was going to be elected because I could see how the media was pushing it. So I started making the Obama deception. Then I started accelerating it after he was president-elect and released it one month after he was in office. So close to four years old. Again, though, I'm not psychic. This is all public what they were planning. So listen to it. This is only part of it. And then go watch it. Sure, I sell the DVD at InfoWars.com, InfoWarsShop.com. Sure, you can support us if you want it in high res and to make copies and give it to people. That doesn't matter, though. This is about saving the country and the world from tyranny. Look at all the other countries that have fallen to tyranny. And it's happening here now. So here is the Obama deception when I get out of the banking collapse and how it was only phase one to continue the organized collapse of the world holding us hostage to derivatives. And then I get into the goals of the globalists through their puppet Obama. Here it is. As the world slid deeper into depression, the bankers celebrated the fire sale that they had created. I believe this, the phrase burdens of the office is overstated. Yes, can I? Now, why me? Oh, the burdens. You know, why, why did the financial collapse have to happen on my watch? It's just pathetic, isn't it? Self-pity. And, and I don't believe uh, a president-elect Obama will be full of self-pity. With their access to unlimited fiat capital, they could now buy up sectors of the world economy. 
not already controlled by them. For over a century, the Anglo-American establishment had worked to bring the world system to this point. Artificially engineered global bankruptcy. In an address before the Trilateral Commission in June of 1991, David Rockefeller laid out the elite's ultimate goal the supranational sovereignty of an intellectual elite and world bankers is surely preferable to the national auto-determination practiced in the last centuries. Now that the bankers were holding the world hostage, they issued their ultimatum. The only solution to restart the global economy would be to set up a planetary government ruled by a new bank of the world. A bank of the world owned and controlled by them. Suddenly, Hundreds of prominent publications announced the solution, the people's only salvation. Time magazine, in an article titled The New World Order, said that the new super bank would control the world's currencies and set interest rates, and that the new bank would, quote, knock the heads of bad countries, like the United States. At a meeting of central bank heads and finance ministers dubbed Bretton Woods II, the plan for world government was unveiled by the very bankers that had engineered the collapse. Formerly sovereign countries would now pay their taxes directly to the banking cartel. Hundreds of new carbon taxes controlling every facet of human activity would only be the beginning. Now all the elite had to do was to sell the public on accepting the final phase of their takeover. And it's Obama's job to sucker the public into standing down so the banker's agenda can move forward unhindered. Never before in U.S. history has the media gotten behind a president like they are behind Obama. The press has pulled out all the stops, bestowing a crown of infallibility upon Obama as the savior of the people, the elite are betting everything they've got on Obama's charisma and hoping that he can sell the world on their program of tyranny. Yes, there have been differences between America and Europe. No doubt there will be differences in the future. But the burdens of global citizenship continue to bind us together. A change of leadership in Washington will not lift this burden. In this new century, Americans and Europeans alike will be required to do more, not less. Partnership and cooperation among nations is not a choice. It is the only way. We've got to give them a stake in creating the kind of uh, uh, world order that I think all of us would like to see. In truth, Obama is not simply continuing George W. Bush's policies. He is radically expanding them. I thank President Bush for his service to our nation. This film has documented the painful fact that Barack Obama's agenda is the complete opposite of what he has claimed it to be. All right. Now we will reveal. Now we will reveal when we come back what he was going to do, and he did it. Get ready, straight ahead from three and a half years ago, the agenda that we're now living. Stay with us. The Bush for his service to our nation. This film has documented the painful fact that Barack Obama's agenda is the complete opposite of what he has claimed it to be. Now we will reveal what Barack Obama and his controllers' true agenda is. Number one, bring the United States under the complete regulatory control of a private offshore superbank known as the Bank of the World. More than a hundred new taxes are now being developed under the umbrella of curbing greenhouse gases. The new taxes will be paid directly to the private bank consortium. At the producer level, taxes will be paid on farm animals' flatulence. At the consumer level, there will be carbon taxes on all forms of meat, beef, poultry, pork and fish. All cars will be fitted with satellite tracking boxes that will tax driving by the mile and an added tax will be placed on all fossil fuels, including motor oil and natural gas. All plastic products will have a carbon tax added. Outdoor space heaters and fireplaces are to be taxed. All electricity produced by coal-powered plants will be taxed. 
Under the cap and trade system, citizens will be forced to pay taxes on thousands of products to private cap and trade services owned by Al Gore and other elitists. There will be taxes on light bulbs, water, trash pickup, air travel, train travel, bus, ship, medicine, steel production, mining, clothing, laundry, asphalt are just a few of the new taxes to be levied. But to truly transform our economy, to protect our security and save our planet from the ravages of climate change, we need to ultimately make clean, renewable energy the profitable kind of energy. So I ask this Congress to send me legislation that places a market-based cap on carbon pollution and drives the production of more renewable energy in America. That's what we need. The notion of anthropogenic global warming is a fraud. In other words, the idea that the planet is getting warmer and that human activity is somehow responsible is a pseudo-scientific fraud. It's a big lie. It's a monstrosity. Remember the Nazis, they had race science, race hygiene. They said Aryan blood is different from any other kind of blood. This was, of course, idiocy, a fantastic piece of nonsense. Today, we got something similar. Global warming caused by human activity, and the answer to that is carbon tax plus cap and trade, according to the wishes of Al Gore, Prince Charles, and basically the entire uh, world uh, banking community, the world oligarchy. What they're trying to do with that is to perpetuate the current system where bankers rule the world, financiers rule the world, and the rest of us get the crumbs from the table. But remember, if you try to put on cap and trade and a global warming uh, carbon tax with the idea that you're going to save the polar bears, what you're going to do is destroy human society. You're going to cause genocide on a massive scale. The deaths will be measured in the hundreds of millions and indeed in the billions. Just the idea of global warming means that there'll be no development for Africa, no development for the poorer parts of Southeast Asia, and no world economic recovery of any kind ever in our entire lifetime. So it's important to expose and fight the pseudo-scientific fraud of global warming. One more point about this. You don't need a climatologist to know that this stuff is a fraud. I'm a historian. I can tell you. In the last thousand years, we had a period of very warm temperatures called the medieval warm period, where all kinds of grapes and uh, semi-tropical stuff were growing very far into the northern hemisphere. That was about 1100, 1200. It happened to correspond with an all-time um, maximum of sunspots. Right now, we can say that we're going into another maximum period where there'll be some warming, but we're well within the limits of the medieval warm period. About uh, 1600 to 1650, there was an ice age in northern Europe. The North Sea was filled with ice. The German and Dutch ports and the English ports were filled with ice. That corresponds to an all-time minimum of sunspot activity, the Spurger minimum and the Maunder minimum. So, this has largely got to do with solar activity. We can see that other planets, not just the Earth, are warming slightly as a result of increased solar activity. But we're well within the minimum. So what the oligarchs claim to be an open and shut scientific case is a piece of pseudo-scientific nonsense, and it should be rejected. Number two, the social engineers are fully aware that the Obama craze will wear off quickly. So they are racing to put in place the most oppressive police state control grid in human history. 20,000 battle-hardened regular army troops are now being deployed to patrol the streets of the United States. FEMA is now building giant camps in every region of the country. And the Congress has introduced bills like the National Emergency Centers Act, H.R. 645, which merges local governments and the police under federal control. And as we all know that have watched these things, they're ready for the riots. With these detention centers that are being opened up around the country, with state police training for riot control in the, in the event of economic calamity and food riots, they know what's going on and they're prepared for it. 
So people better also prepare for it themselves. Anyone that's not prepared for what's going to happen, they deserve what they get. Because there's enough information out there pointing to the problems. And they should take all precautionary actions. Next, Obama ordered the Defense Department to issue DOD Directive 1404.10, establishing a one million person civilian army under his control. Simultaneously, Obama launched USAService.org. The new website deceptively masquerades as a federal agency, but in reality is a recruiting tool building a separate, completely private army outside of government that takes orders directly from Obama's controllers. Barack Obama has refused to rescind Presidential Decision Directive 51, signed by George W. Bush. The directive plainly states, the president is a dictator and that Congress is ceremonial. We cannot continue to rely only on our military in order to achieve the national security objectives that we've set. We've got to have a civilian national security force that's just as powerful, just as strong, just as well-funded. President Obama and his Chief of Staff Rahm Emanuel have repeatedly stated on the record that all Americans below the age of 64 will be forcibly conscripted into federal service. Citizenship is not an entitlement program. It comes with responsibilities. Everybody somewhere between the ages of 18 and 25 will serve three months of basic training and understanding in a kind of civil defense. Now, it doesn't always have to be uh, service in uniform. One of the things that if you talk to our generals, they are desperate Oh, for yeah, you got to have all this responsibility. Uh, counterpart. You've got to buy government health care, and you've got to do national service. This is what they're all planning. But first, they've got to fully bankrupt the economy. We're live July 8th, 2012. We'll be back with more of the Obama deception, then a guest, and a lot more. Stay with us. I'm trying to get across. We're taught by the corporate collaborator media that works with the foreign banks that have taken the country over by fraud. They go on CNBC, they go on CNN, they brag, yeah, we've conquered America. It's in all the financial publications. It's a big joke. We're known as the as the chumps of the planet. And the average adult man thinks he's really tough because he's got, you know, got a golf bag. I'm not saying it's bad to play golf. And because, you know, he works out. And he, so he struts around thinking, hey, I'm American, I'm on top of the world. And America doesn't even exist anymore. Like France didn't exist once the Nazis conquered it. It was now a possession. And we've been conquered through fraud. It's, it's, it's a matrix level delusion. We're now deep in to this takeover, and the people taking us over want to shut the economy off. They call it a post-industrial world. They know raising taxes will bankrupt us. In fact, the Western Journalism Center, there's an article out today, confirmed, and I'll cover this later, after I finish up with this, confirmed that illegal aliens are getting the Obamacare. They get it free, they don't have to pay in, you do. And who wrote the plan? The insurance companies owned by the big mega banks predominantly who want to make you buy their product, 35 million of you that weren't buying it, and they can control what you get, lower the quality, charge you more, and then have their constituents, foreigners, come in who will vote to take your guns, they will vote to take your private property, and soon it'll be game over. They'll have a giant dependent class that will vote and do whatever they're told. And out of the dependent classes, they will get the police and the minions and the bureaucrats. It's already happened in England, and it's game over. This is the plan, well executed against us. Meanwhile, they know there's a chance America may wake up. So they're militarizing the police against us and setting the military up. I mean, listen to what I talked about dealing with troops on the streets. And I show documents, if you're a radio listener, we're streaming video with the articles and documents at prisonplanet.tv. Now here we are three and a half, almost four years later, and it's all over the news. Oh, yeah, troops were out at the local kite fest. Oh, yeah, there's going to be a highway checkpoint with U.S. Army. Oh, the Marines were out doing a DWI checkpoint. Oh, in St. Louis, they're doing a martial law drill. Not for Al-Qaeda, though, you see. Oh, no, 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 no. It's for you because the federal government got taken over. Just like when the French basically stood down to Hitler because most of the generals had been paid off. And then the next day, the military, French military, went under the Nazis and operated as the Vichy French. 
great historical parallel to what's happening now. But it's not even announced. Hitler's not parading through D.C. like he did Paris. It's just the global banks took over through fraud, put their people in all the regulatory positions, and here we are. And it's not polite for the average American male to talk about this because it's like, yeah, all right, we got conquered. Big deal. I won't feel manly if I admit it. Plus, I'm not going to do anything about it. Okay, well, they're going to take everything you got. Forced inoculations, raising taxes, imploding economy. Maybe you think you're smart enough to serve the system for a while. Okay, you're now on the bad guys team. It doesn't take a majority of us to prevail against tyrants. Only a highly motivated, focused minority. 5% started and won the war against the Redcoats 236 years ago. We can defeat the globalists in the info war now. We have 25, 30% that are really awake. We wake up one more group of people, one more phase, and we win. We've already got the globalists in check. Checkmate. They know this. That's Look at Fast and Furious. They're very close to going to prison for that false flag, that terror attack they set up to blame the Second Amendment. But we're on a razor's edge. The globalists could stage terror attacks right now. They could start new wars as they're getting ready to do to make us rally around them. So we think, oh, the government's actually, you know, is American because we're in a war or there was a terror attack. We better rally around and do what they say. Just remember, they want you to rally around letting them cheat you and screw you. Stop being chumps, folks. I know it's scary, but it's now in your face. Do I need to play newscast again saying we've been conquered and are, quote, slaves to foreign banks? You want to hear CNBC? You want to hear CNN? You want me to read the headlines out of 50 articles the last two weeks announcing we're slaves from the biggest publications out there and saying we're lucky we're slaves to technocratic bankers as if they're going to fix things when they engineered it? That's the one thing they leave out. This was done by design. I told you 14 years ago on air. Now let's go ahead and go to a little bit more of Obama deception. I'm going to come back, hit news, go to a guest for 30 minutes, and then I'm going to premiere. I wasn't going to do it now, but I'll do it at the end of the show. Premiere a key analysis of what we're going to live under if the globalists win or what humanity could do if we throw off the, the uh, bonds, the chains that they're trying to wrap around us, these lillipullies. All right, let's go ahead and go to a little bit more of the Obama deception. Here it is. It doesn't always have to be uh, service in uniform. One of the things that if you talk to our generals, they are desperate for is a civilian uh, counterpart to our military forces. So is this compulsory then? Well, you have to, uh, in a sense, it's a required of everybody, 18 to 25, three months. Uh, and at some point at that point, you do it. Obviously, I'm not going to say perfect legislation will work that process through you could do it during a college right. summer or you I could do it after anytime. high school if you have a demagogue with a fanatical mass movement a personality cultist who is imposing the program of a group of extreme bankers and finance oligarchs that's fascism obama's transition site change.gov proclaimed that middle school and high school students will be forced to serve the federal government Fascism is gutter up, streets up, hooligans, thugs, fervently idealistic students, swarming adolescents, just the kind of thing you see around Obama. The way you get a population to enslave itself when the police and the army are no longer enough to do that. So I think that's, that's uh, if you're a left liberal, uh, it's time to open your eyes to that. All young Americans between the ages of 18 and 24 will be conscripted into a paramilitary domestic security force. If Obama has his way, adults and seniors will also be forced into other forms of service for the betterment of the homeland. Number three, disarming the American people. Obama operatives in the Congress have introduced more than 10 bills that would end the Second Amendment as we know it. H.R. 1022 would allow the new Attorney General Eric Holder the dictatorial power to ban any gun he wishes at will. In 2008, before the Supreme Court, in the D.C. gun ban case, District of Columbia versus Heller, Holder argued for the complete disarmament of the American people and that only the military should own firearms. H.R. 257 would ban all youth shooting sports including YMCA and Youth Olympic Shooting Clubs. H.R. 45 would force all gun owners to undergo federal psychological screening 
registration and testing to keep their firearms. White House Chief of Staff Rahm Emanuel has proposed the extrajudicial banning of any American on the fraudulent no-fly list from owning any firearm. That is, if you are on the no-fly list because you are known as maybe a possible terrorist, you cannot buy a handgun in America. Over 25,000 Americans are added each month to the no-fly list, which numbers over a million people who have not been charged or convicted of any crime. It's a case of mistaken identity for a five-year-old boy from Normandy Park. He had trouble boarding a plane because someone with his same name is wanted by the federal government. King 5's Mimi Jung is live at SeaTac Airport to explain. Mimi. Lori, it's hard to believe that a five-year-old could be considered a threat, but that's exactly what happened here at SeaTac last week when Matthew Gardner showed up for a flight to LAX. And a friend As five-year-olds go, Matthew Gardner is about as harmless as you can get. But when he and his mom checked in for their flight at SeaTac last week, Matthew was considered the criminal. If you're on that no-fly list, your access to the right to bear arms is canceled because you're not part of the American family. You don't deserve that right. There is no right for you if you're on that terrorist list. And even though this Matthew Gardner is only in kindergarten, TSA workers still conducted a full-blown search. They searched all of our belongings. They took everything apart piece by piece. Um, Nadia Counter says it wasn't easy being treated as a possible threat to national security. War on corruption every Sunday, live 4 to 6 p.m. Central, 5 to 7 Eastern, 2 to 4 Pacific, 3 to 5 Mountain. The websites, the news websites with breaking key intel daily, I think a lot of news that becomes national news every week, are Infowars.com, because there's a war on for your mind. PrisonPlanet.tv has our nightly news show, 7 o'clock Central every evening. The live video streams of the radio show, six days a week. I'm hiring a bunch of uh, uh, additional reporters and video editors, and I'm even starting a weekly newspaper slash magazine that will then go to weekly, uh, and then we'll become daily down the road. I'm just going to leave it at that, uh, that we plan to roll out nationwide uh, that is in all the major cities, um, if things don't totally collapse, and it's going towards that, but if we back the globalist off, we will have time to expand what we're uh, doing resisting them. I mean, it's really a catch-22, uh, that the more we back off the globalist, uh, the more desperate they get, but that buys us more time. So we're doing everything we can here to defend this republic. Again, the websites are prisonplanet.tv, prisonplanet.com, infowars.com and Infowars.net. Sometimes the big sites go down occasionally, so you have an Infowars.net uh, as a auxiliary backup to the big sites, PrisonPlanet.com and Infowars.com. And again, the video site up over nine years, PrisonPlanet.tv. Okay, I want to finish up this hour with uh, eight, nine minutes more of the Obama deception made in 2008, 2009. Started making it uh, in October of 2008, released it in March of 2009. And here at the end of the film, I was going through what Obama and his controllers were going to do and how they would bring in a new puppet uh, later to replace him. And you notice that uh, even mainline conservatives are saying Mitt Romney's a nightmare, uh, that he's now really supporting Obamacare. Well, of course, he helped write it. The banks that control him did. We're in a lot of trouble, ladies and gentlemen. A lot of evidence points towards Mitt Romney taking a dive for Obama uh, because they're bought and paid for by the same interest. Who knows what's going to happen? It's like a Don King boxing match. Both, uh, both, both horses are completely owned here. Both fighters uh, are completely owned here. This is like WWF or WWE. Then we're going to come back and go to journalist Dan Fight. He's the guy a few months ago uh, broke that the police were giving drugs to people to make them informants. And then the media said, oh, that couldn't be true. The state police said, we know nothing in Minnesota. Turned out it was all true. Became national news. Uh, he's really good at ferreting out documents. This Army document turned out was public, but not uh, on the web. Uh, and it's an Army document where they're training for gun confiscation. They call it gun evacuation from your home or your business. And uh, for shooting you if you protest. So, again, the banksters <laughs> really are, uh, are pulling all the stops there because they're all going to go to prison. If they're not able, they either get total power, all their chips are in here, all their cards are on the table. They're, they're committed, they're going for broke. 
train left the station. They're either going to totally take over and win this, or they're all going to jail like Bernie Madoff and Ken Lang. Again, I told you six years ago, under Bush, they were shipping guns into Mexico to destabilize it. Uh, the last uh, three and a half under Obama, they gave them hand grenades and stuff and, and, and then shipped them to drug gangs in the U.S. That's now coming out, we told you two years ago, to blame the Second Amendment. That came out years after. I mean, it's not hard. They did it to blame the Second Amendment, and now they're doing it. How did I know? They admitted two years ago they had a gun walker program and were calling to restrict guns and ban semi-autos because of it, blaming the U.S. That's why it's public that the Attorney General and Janet uh, Reno, part two, uh, big sis Napolitano, lied to Congress because we have their press conferences three years ago admitting the program. That's how I knew they were doing it to blame the Second Amendment, because they were blaming it. They were already blaming the violence on the Gunwalker program and saying we've traced guns. Well, yeah, the 20,000 you shipped down there. They're terrorists. They're not Americans. They're globalists. They're crooks. And, 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 and the fact that I'm on air and able to talk about this shows they don't have all the power. They got the federal government. They've got parts of it. They've got some of the states. They don't have total power. They're the minority. The globalists are a small criminal group. But if they can use the propaganda and the media they control to get us to get in line, they're going to win. And this country's going down. And what other army documents have come out in the last two months that we broke and that the Pentagon responded to and said, yeah, those are real and you're not supposed to have them. Look it up. Re-education camps in America for people that don't like the New World Order. Oh, yeah. And just because they're dreaming of it doesn't mean they'll be able to execute it. We've got to be in its face. I believe you have courage. I believe that when you hear the facts, you're going to get angry, focused, and take action and speak out. I believe in you. People say, Alex, stop trying to scare people. What, are you cowards? It, look, look, I discovered this and took action against it, and look what I've been able to do, thanks to your support. And other stations around the country that have owners and managers that understand this is real and care about this country and aren't cowards. Plus, they get giant ratings. Well, do the right thing and win. Yeah, that's what it's all about. Our forebears in 1776 did the right thing and won big time. We are winners, not losers. But we're the main enemy of the New World Order. We've been their engine since they captured us, but no more. We're breaking free. We're breaking the trance. Here's a few more minutes of Obama deception. We'll take you out to the next hour, and we'll come back with our guest, Dan fight, and then I'll premiere here on air one of the most powerful reports we've ever produced, humanity's greatest secret, dreams of the universe. You want solutions? We've got them. Realize your greatness. Here's a little bit more of the Obama deception. Um, Nadia Counter says it wasn't easy being treated as a possible threat to national security. I picked up my child to give him a hug and tell him, you know, it's okay, we're doing fine. And they reported to me that I was not allowed to touch him. He was a security risk, and um, they had to research me to make sure that I had not um, obtained any materials from him. Number four, massive restrictions on the First Amendment guarantee of free speech. The President, Congress, and the FCC have announced plans to not only curtail speech on talk radio and newspapers, but to also regulate speech on the internet. And they're trying the it now. The Orwellian named Fairness Doctrine. And they're trying it right now. The Obama machine is also pressuring Congress to pass draconian hate speech laws that will eviscerate the First Amendment. Number five, they plan to further federalize health care so that the government can dictate what kind of care citizens receive. Modeled after the British system, this includes rationing care and restricting what procedures the handicapped and elderly are eligible for. Number six, Obama is already pushing to expand the Department of Defense budget and to station more U.S. troops overseas to encircle Russia, China, Iran, as well as setting up bases in Africa under the pretext of humanitarian aid and dominate and occupy Africa through AFRICOM. So we're taking your phone call, seeing what you think of Barack H. Obama. Is he a Judas goat? Is he a front man? Is he a betrayer? Let's go to Anthony in Georgia. Anthony, what's your take on Barack Obama? Uh, they put the face of Barack Obama as uh, part of their, their public relations because it's like the old folk tales about vampires. A vampire cannot force his way into somebody's house. It gets, it's against some kind of metaphysical law. 
So the vampire has to persuade the resident of the household to open the door and invite him in. So they're going to look at the people at Barack Obama, which looks like them and appears to be on their side. They're going to say, okay, here's my ally. Let me open the door and let me let uh, this person in. And then Barack Obama is just, of course, a front man for the American empire where he's going to have the entire U.S. Navy, the entire U.S. Army, and the entire U.S. Marines under AFRICOM command. And, of course, he's going to turn it into a new Iraq, and he's going to turn it into a new Afghanistan. Everything, every operation that you see going on in Iraq and Afghanistan is going to propagate to the uh, poor countries of Africa. And well, sir, sir, I agree with you. Sir, I agree with you. They're looking to the people. They see a handsome, smiling African face. You know, he's all, hey, I'm from Kenya. And then it's a total bait and switch. But it's the same thing here in the United States where they would get sell-out uh, Native American chiefs to sell out their people. This is the oldest right. trick in the book. And he can also pacify uh, the most downtrodden minority groups in the United States. And he's saying, hey, get ready for sacrifice. Get ready to lose your standard of living. They're like, yay, I love Obama. They could never get away with this with a John McCain. Obama basically does uh, a couple of things. One is, again, this idea, kick the Chinese out of Africa. Kick them out of Sudan where they get oil. Kick them out of Zimbabwe where they get raw materials. Start a civil war in Congo, another big source of raw materials. Al-Qaeda, an arm of uh, the U.S. intelligence community, is now active in Algeria, Tunisia, Morocco. You've got a destabilization going on in Kenya around Odinga. That's Obama's cousin. This is a guy who has two uh, children, they're Obama's niece and, uh, well, nephew in a broad sense. Uh, and one of them is named Raul, and the other one is named Winnie, after Winnie Mandela, who did the next All right, folks. Second hour is only minutes away. That's just part of the Obama deception. It's free online. The Obama deception. See it. Give it to others. It's the key to understanding the foreign banking takeover of America. The banksters are white-collar criminals, fraudsters. They know what they're doing. They took over Europe hundreds of years before they took over the United States. Very same cartel systems. Finance both sides of a war. Push social welfare nets really to control society, create a dependent class. They know exactly what they're doing. And now they've gotten the pension funds, the city funds, the county funds, the water district the school district, everything invested in the fraud. And so now they've created a giant black hole of derivatives impossible to pay off, but they hold everyone hostage saying, give us more, do what we say, or the whole thing comes down. It either comes down quickly and we become free, or it comes down slowly and they salami slice and take all of our liberties. Notice everything they do, government takeover of healthcare really is social engineering, it's done slowly. It's phased in over four or five years. Everything they do is about fraud. Oh, it's the law you take vaccines. Oh, it's not really the law, but we want you to get a waiver, but a waiver to something that isn't the law. Everything is about color of law fraud with these globalists. And I beg you out there to become aware of this and to realize what's happening and to speak out to others because, again, it's not just some regular corrupt system we've got. People that just want money. The globalists want total power over our genetics, over our lives. They want to play God. And coming up in about 30 minutes after our guest leaves us, I'm going to premiere here on the radio. The video is red-linked up at Infowars.com. Humanity's greatest secret, dreams of the universe. And I don't have a religious show, but I don't hide when I'm passionate that I'm a Christian. And I don't mean a Christian like these Pharisees in the big churches, but that I believe in Christ I have a relationship uh, with God. I know the universe was created. I can feel the presence of God. I've had a lot of experiences that are private. It's like that uh, Fleetwood Mac song. Yeah, here they come, the crystal visions. Yeah, I keep my visions to myself. And when I put this video out, a lot of these Pharisees types, because obviously something powerful is going to scare people, are like, oh my gosh, it's, it's Luciferian, you know, saying the universe created us. No, I said we came out of the creation out of the universe, the creation, the globalist posing as atheist, the Satanists tell you that we were just uh, burbled out of slime, not that we were created. But the point is, is that you got all these pinhead preachers who said the earth was flat, wasn't in the Bible, the Bible said it was round. 
uh, the Quran said it's round for that matter. Um, you've got all these pinhead preachers saying the earth 6,000 years old when the Bible says a day was as a year and a year was as a day. All these dogmas of men so that they could advertise against the church across the street and say, we've got the real doctrine, they're all going to hell. And then somebody leaves their church and goes across the street, that, no, 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 they're going to hell. This isn't, this show is about waking people up to the spiritual and cultural blindness of the plastic corporate culture. So that people will just think for themselves and realize there's more to the universe and realize the value of humanity. Realize that we can reach for the stars, that, that, that humanity has a better side. The globalists tell us we're trash, we're filth. Funny, these preachers are telling us that too. They tell us that we're trash and the globalists tell us we're trash. But the truth is, is that we have, we're made in the image of the creator. We, we, we're not junk. And these preachers want to make you feel bad, so they're your God. You understand that? Instead of God being your God. They want to pray up on the hilltop in front of everybody instead of their prayer closet. So that's a little side issue. It was a small group of them. It's just that, my goodness, no wonder Christianity's dying all over the world. Because it's not real. What these people profess and put out is not real. And it's just amazing. But th this isn't even religious, though. It's about how far humanity's come, the struggles our ancestors went through. And I do talk about evil breeding on this planet, you know, the, you know, that it's a fight between good and evil. Because it's a message to everybody to be aware of good and evil and to wake up to that larger fact. See, so many are deep in a trance. I'm trying to wake people up. They're in a trance. Then they can go get henpecked by the Pharisees all day who all know it all and don't have any stick in their eye. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Know that we're in trouble when even Forbes magazine does an analysis of the UN Small Arms Treaty and finds, yes, this is written where they can register guns and then start banning them. Uh, no kidding, Unidir meeting. I uh, just look it up uh, at the UN when they first wrote this treaty. It's the same treaty today back in July of 2001, July 7th, said the civilian ownership of firearms threatens the legitimate power monopoly of the state. I don't know about you, but I don't think the state needs a power monopoly. In fact, can you imagine Thomas Jefferson hearing uh, the, the U.S. government try to sign on to a treaty saying that civilians should have their guns all taken because the state should have a monopoly of power? How about a separation of powers? Whereas I lean more towards total liberty and what extremists would call anarchy, I understand it doesn't work in large groups of people because there's always people that get together in gangs. And so, but that's what government turns into. So there's the anarchical capitalist argument right there. The point here is, is that we're repeating history right now. In Rome under Caesar or in Latin American or African countries or Asian countries today, it's military coups. President Eisenhower in his farewell address warned us of the military industrial complex, beware. He went on to say the technocratic elite that controls it though, that part's always left out. Go watch the full film, it's online. Just type in full farewell address Eisenhower. Sounds like Alex Jones. The point is, army, or Alex Jones sounds like Eisenhower. Army manual outlines plan to kill Americans, demonstrators, you name it. That's the Infowars.com article. The one that broke it is hongpong.com. That's Dan Fight's site. Warning shot will not be fired. MPs trained in martial law in America. And that's a 300 plus page. Well, one part of it's 300. There's more. Gun confiscation, uh, mortar attacks, uh, mass slaughtering. I mean, you want North Korea, baby, you got it. And again, you got the Secretary of the Army coming out calling for all this in, in foreign affairs a month ago or so. The question is, why are they gearing up for this? And by the way, well, they say for collapse, as if it wasn't engineered. I've been telling you for 14 years, I've been on air 17, about the planned derivatives collapse. I learned about it from George Humphrey, former Austin City Council member, economist, but more importantly, successful businessman, showing he knows what he's talking about. And it all came true. As soon as George is back in the country, because he lives all over the world, uh, he's got houses everywhere. Can we get him back in here, George Humphrey? Because he'll never talk about himself. I've got to dig up those shows where he laid it all out. Anyways, we're here. We're talking to Dan Fight this segment and the next. Dan, I'm going to try to give you the floor. Folks watching at prisonplanet.tv can actually see the documents. They're in your article. They're in our article. It, it, this is a public PDF. Ties into all the other uh, re-education camp documents, all of it. 
what does this signify? Again, you're a journalist. You've worked the Capitol beat there in Minnesota, broken a lot of big stories. Uh, you ferreted this out. Give us your analysis of this piece of uh, piece of training that they're giving the Army. Sure. Um, good to be with you, Alex, again, once again. Um, essentially, uh, this document fits into a important larger context of uh, similar documents, uh, similar levels of planning for, uh, you know, extended domestic military operations under the command of the central uh, federal government. And uh, so uh, this one includes uh, warrantless search and seizure. It includes, uh, you know, a, a lot of talk about use of force inside military operated uh, domestic detention facilities. And it, it uh, you know, talks about searching for what they call dissidents slash snipers and that kind of thing. And I think, um, you know, uh, if you're ever dealing with a situation where the military are on the streets of the United States, um, and in my personal experience, I worked at covering the 2008 Republican National Convention and uh, the 2009 uh, G20 conference in Pittsburgh, uh, those were both uh, events where uh, domestic military activity was at a particularly high level as they are national, national special security events, as the RNC and DNC will be later this year as well. And those events are, are used to kind of uh, run through plans uh, that are similar to this or like this or kind of uh, the beginnings of implementation yeah, they have of snatch this. snatch and grabs, you name it, because I yeah. like the city cordoning is in here too. Locking down cities yeah. is really friendly. Right. Yeah, and so um, what I've discovered in uh, early 2010 on a U.S. Army Corps of Engineer web server uh, was a, a presentation that involved the national level exercise, uh, 2011 New Madrid seismic zone uh, earthquake uh, drill that was going on at that time, and accidentally left inside that PowerPoint were uh, annotation notes about um, a different level of planning above this kind of training, and that plan is called uh, uh, Concept of Operations Plan or Con Plan 3502 which is held by the U.S. Northern Command, or NORTHCOM. Um, the primary plan uh, that NORTHCOM activates in coordination with the Federal Emergency Management Agency, um, each FEMA region has offices called a DCO, or Defense Coordinating Offices, with about uh, 20 or 30 or so military officers. And so Con Plan 3501 is the sort of nice plan that's you know used in the event of big disasters, activating helicopters. That's called Defense Support of Civil Authorities. So that's essentially NORTHCOM's like number one plan and then their number two plan is called civil disturbance operations con plan 3502 and that's and so all in law under john warner defense authorization act 2007 yeah. Yeah, and I should really point out that, uh, again, if you want to get a real handle on uh, how this domestic military situation works, be sure to look at something called the Domestic Operational Law Handbook for Judge Advocates. It has a big picture of the Statue of Liberty on the front of it. Um, <laughs> it it's hosted on LOC.gov, and that lays out a ton of detail. It talks about uh, how uh, it cites how Con Plan 3502 is the replacement for the old plan called Garden Plot, which was created in the 60s after the Kerner Commission reported on riots in the United and States. And really it's a reissuance and of Rex 84. Yeah, so Rex 84 was another run through of, of a, the garden plot type plan in the same way that a national special security but event here's is the kind difference. of a run through here's of, of the difference. Exactly. Here's the difference though. I would guess, and you've done deep research on this as well, in fact in some cases more than I, so give me your take on it. I would conservatively say there's probably 50 times the funding and actual training now than there was then. They're, uh, they're, they, everything looks like they're firing up the engines. They got the lights on. They're get, yeah. I mean, before it was little documents and Congress freaked out. Now, this is everywhere. Right. I, I want to point out there's a, another level that's developed uh, outside the Pentagon as well. Um, inside the uh, Department of Homeland Security, uh, ICE, Immigration and Customs Enforcement, has developed a new agency that they've retitled Homeland Security Investigations in the last few months. And this used to be called the uh, ICE uh, OI Office of Investigations. So if you've seen these uh, pictures of giant trucks being moved around that look like, uh, I think they're called uh, MRAPs, um, they're, they're basically, they are military trucks adapted for domestic use and they're they're enormous um, and they're, they're distributing these across the country so these HSI units are being pretty much run out of the same offices as other uh, Homeland Security Customs Enforcement offices but you agree with me that this is 50 times what it was in the 80s I mean it's, it's I mean th they're going operational is my point 
Uh, yeah, yeah, but I'm like I'm just saying like there are in, entire levels uh, being built out on this. I mean, I just wrote up a, a quick blog post on this civil disturbance operations document, which was uh, found by PublicIntelligence.net. They do a great job. I really support their work. Um, but we see more and more of these things being added up really quickly. And this new ICE uh, HSI Homeland Security investigations, they're getting their hands in everything. And one article I found said that they were the descendants of the cocaine cowboys of the 1980s, the SWAT teams that were tight with George bush and the cia stuff going on so you know it, it just we find like uh and i was the first person to kind of like point out this new hsi agency in a blog post and sort of satirize um the sort of silliness that they have going on like literally landing black helicopters in an exercise at the super bowl you know and stuff like that it, it, so they're building up more and more of these different bureaucracies but if, if we can get a sense of them if we can get people to kind of track in on what these things are doing going through primary source documents that are coming out uh, um uh, quite a lot um yeah. also I just you know, I want to point out, too, we need people to parse through document dumps. That's one thing that needs to happen. Um, there's a good project called uh, Echelon 2 uh, with uh, Barrett Brown that's looked at all these sort of data dumps that have come out of, you know, through Anonymous and things like that. And then there's another one, um, a, a group that's mainly based in Europe called Telecomics. Uh, yes. Have a, a, we got to go to break. Stay there. I'm going to come back and try to give you the floor for that final segment and get you back during the week because your work's so important. But what you're saying is it's not just Dan Fight, It's not just Alex Jones. It's not just the Electronic Frontier Foundation. This stuff's everywhere. And, and the globalists are hiding this military buildup against us under hundreds of different configurations. But the point is they're going operational. This isn't just plans. They're taking over. They got troops dressed up as police killing people right now. We've got a special report I did on where did humanity come from? What is our prime directive? And do people care that we've got a group of social engineers in control directing human development? That's a fact. That's going on. Bill Gates is uh, putting billions into a program. Here it is off a major university site for genetically engineered humans. These are the debates that... Uh, are happening and i know your preacher just says oh it's the end of the world don't worry about it we're going to discuss it here so powerful info coming up in the final two segments dan fight i'm gonna get you back up for a full hour on the weekday show that's noon to 3 p.m eastern uh but uh, we've got about 10 minutes right now in this segment we got a bunch of documents for people watching on prisonplanet.tv radio listeners can go there tomorrow we'll have the video of this radio interview posted so people can see it but but you've got the floor finish finish your points about this quickening, this acceleration as the iceberg of shadow government emerges to the surface. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think uh, overall the the trend that I've seen accelerating is that uh, you know essentially the war has been kind of coming back home. Uh, military contractor technology uh, is now being resold uh, using you know Homeland Security as the big label for it. Uh, and there's a, a structure of grant programs that everybody should uh, check out. The uh, something called the Department of Justice Bureau of Justice Assistance assigns a, a ton of grants, and then that's like one of the major funding sources because local governments can't really afford a lot of this silly police state technology like the the big truck that berkeley got for example i believe that came through something called the department of homeland security uh, urban areas security initiative or uasi uh, that's another major one um, we see states like uh, oklahoma for example getting uh really big into drone use i was just looking uh, i think the domain is usa-ok.org it's like an unmanned aerial vehicle like promotion association or something so they're just trying to build out this thing as quickly as they can not just in the united states but all over the world um it's private and uh, the invasion of everybody's privacy is privatized. Uh, the coercion of people, uh, you know, whether it's private prisons or privatized, you know, ankle bracelets and stuff. All, they all buy these our politicians things. and then force yeah. us to, and, and you keep calling it trucks. These are giant armored mega tanks out of a science fiction movie with weapons all over them. Uh, yeah, those the ICE, the uh, Homeland Security uh, Investigations Department, is yeah is getting these enormous trucks uh, as well. And uh, um, another thing, um, I just the last thing I was mentioning, um, there's a couple of good wikis out there that I really think are really good. Uh, one of them is um, the Echelon Two uh, wiki with the uh, Barrett Brown and the kind of anonymous researcher people. The other one is called uh, Telecomics with an X uh, B S R E, and uh, they're doing uh, sort of compiling all of these different uh, communications and surveillance technologies that are you know used in countries like Libya and Syria um, so that big Western contractors um, you know install
small police state technology in smaller cities to create um, uh, what I think an expert said to James Bamford was the turnkey totalitarian state. And that's exactly what's happening. Uh, you know, I think Glenn Greenwald said it well recently that um, in order to organize against, you know, powerful and unfair, you know, groups and figures, people need to be able to organize in privacy. And that's essentially what's been taken away from us and then now commodified in a big brother system. And so uh, the document that sort of started this discussion, the civil disturbance operation, a military police planning document from April 2006 that was used at the uh, U.S. Army Military Police School in Fort McClellan, Alabama. Um, that document, you know, from the 2006 era, um, is very reflective of the behavior that the military had during Hurricane Katrina, confiscating firearms, uh, you know, uh, contravening the Fourth Amendment against warrantless searches, which is exactly what this Yeah, that was the training. That was the training. Right. Exactly. They were trained to behave this way, and so that's what you got. It wasn't a full, you know, quote-unquote martial law situation. But whenever there's an escalation in these things, um, it's really important to have an, ask, an understanding of these documents and kind of get a handle on them. Um, one other thing I want to mention, uh, an old story from the Republican National Convention in the Twin Cities was – uh, I heard from multiple people there was something about text messages being tracked and some kind of display that they saw in police cars that no 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 that's confirmed they, they've had that yeah. for about a decade yeah England right. admits they track everybody's text messages right right but we want to like try to figure out you know how exactly this happens and likewise people were, had their houses searched on the basis of what seemed to be uh, package tracking data like well, let me you, tell you they have hubs at all the telecoms since yeah. the ninety six telecommunications act illegally running everything through it. Right, right. And so I think if we can kind of start to identify like the data APIs and like where these different departments are kind of running this data through, it's 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 not that hard to un, to realize that we're called application program interfaces have been put into things like, you know, UPS and FedEx. And so when a national special security event comes to town, they forget about the Fourth Amendment. If you try to file a lawsuit in federal or I know for a fact, because my friends tried, that the federal judge will not even read your entire filing before he throws it out. Like, that, that is a fact. And there's just, how, I don't know how you force a federal judge to even read your filings if they're not going to read them. But that's how they no, operate. No, no, we've been captured by foreign corporate interests, there's no doubt. Yeah, at the, at the mass arrest down by the river during the RNC, that judge did not even read the full filing. But I just want to also throw in, um, a friend of mine uh, sent me a document called the, the Federal Interagency Geospatial Concept of Operations, or GeoConOps, of Department of Homeland Security. It's uh, version 2.0, July 2010. Um, and uh, I haven't even had the full time to read this thing, but it's got a lot of details about how um, uh, these different agencies, the military and stuff, kind of operate. Um, on page 10 of it, there's just one of the craziest diagrams I've ever seen of kind of showing how uh, geographic data moves back and forth. Um, it gets to something called the National Incident Management System, which is kind of the main sort of structure that, that FEMA runs to control incidents. Listen, so 12 years ago, I was at Marine Corps operations in Oakland, and they let us in to tents with projections with all the police with everybody's individual tracker phone where they could yeah. go in. Everything was satellite watch, they had drones. And I had Marines come to my office a month after and say, we're listeners, we want you to watch this. And they had drones watching us while we were there covering it. They used us knowing we were going as an enemy simulant. Right. So, so I was part of the exercise, that's how good their intel was, that I thought I was there getting all this and they had drones watching me. Uh, yeah, and I, I think the New York Times just published a story about reporters uh, in, a don't, in a domestic uh, drone army training facility, and the drones were following cars driving around near the base. So Yeah, that's New York Times. Yeah, and, and um, you know, I went uh, to um, uh, Washington, I, th I think, in, in December. Uh, it was it was cool. I actually got to go to an NDAA protest in the driving rain in front of the White House, and <clears throat> that was a, kind of a classic moment. But I saw drones flying around on the National Mall, uh, sort of around above the protests and stuff. And they look a little weird because they aren't really moving at the normal speed, and they're usually pretty quiet. But the thing to look for is that they have little uh, red tail lights because I think the FAA still imposes those rules. They just don't have a white strobe on the bottom, but you can still spot them by the red tail light. And, and I've heard uh, that people saw them at uh, Occupy protests on the West Coast as well. Yeah, the and drone so following us, and I was only shown the tape and the Marines left, and it was us getting out of our hotel, walking and going to the thing, where they were going, Death Star 708, Death Star, Death Star, we've got them. And, and it was, we went to the restaurant at 8 in the morning, we're at the Denny's, we go to the thing, and there are the Marines 
totally illegally following us, showing, and then, and, and then, quote, they were friends coming to show me. I never knew if it was intimidation or of the Marines out of uniform were actually listeners, but they showed up at, this is like 12 years ago or 10 years ago at Access TV to show me this. It's amazing. Great job, bro. We're going to talk to you for a full hour this week. Colonel Craig Roberts of Army Intelligence, retired, is going to join us this week. He wants to talk about this. He's going to expose Operation Black Star. We're going to set you up, Dan Fight. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Look forward to having you back on later in the week. HongPong.com. I'm Alex Jones of InfoWars.com. Our big report coming up on the destiny of humanity straight ahead. Tell your friends to tune in. The mysteries of the universe, the age old questions. Where did humankind come from? What is our ultimate destiny? The answers to these fundamental questions are hiding in plain view. We came from the universe. We came from all that is creation. We are part of the universe. We come out of this creation. The answer. The question of our existence is wonderment. The planet Earth is home to our species, orbiting a standard sun, two thirds of the way out on the spiral arm of the Milky Way galaxy. Here you see a super galaxy, a cluster of galaxies. Each one of these a galaxy on its own. Hundreds of millions photographed by Hubble. And Hubble isn't even getting out of our backyard. We are in the middle of wonderment, the middle of incredible creation. Humanity has not even dreamed or the mind imagined the potential of our species. People say they want to travel to space as if it's some distant place when we are part of the universe living on an incredibly rich and gorgeous planet in the middle of a universe with hundreds and hundreds of billions of photographed galaxies themselves containing hundreds of billions of stars and planetary systems very similar to our own. Our planet is like a grain of sand at an endless beach. But still, despite the fact that it's so tiny, all of our species history has taken place on this globe. All the kings, all the tyrants, the heroes, the families, the little children, the discoveries, the passions that were felt, all of those experiences have taken place here on this planet. And though our individual lives are finite, we are connected to our ancestors and their discoveries, their triumphs, their misfortunes. And we reach forward into the future towards our future progeny. And as long as our species is not destroyed, we truly live forever. Of the countless species that have swum in the Earth's seas, flown in the sky, crawled across the plains, humanity is undoubtedly superior to them all. But that doesn't mean that we'll always be here. Hundreds of thousands of species have lived on this planet, sometimes for millions of years, before their species disappears, often suddenly. All we're left with is their fossils, snapshots, shadows of what they were. Look at this fantastic fossilized dinosaur skull. Was it the inspiration for the space jockey in Prometheus? Truth is stranger than fiction. All of the thousands and thousands of fantastic species, humanity needs to understand that our existence is just as fragile. Scientists hotly debate whether it was a meteorite, a comet, or other outside threat that destroyed the dinosaurs. With humans, our main threat is ourselves. We've had the power to do it for more than 60 years. And every day we see different scientific installations having disasters. We are the equivalent of gods to Stone Age men. And we can't afford to make the mistakes they made because we will destroy ourselves with the technologies that we have developed. So far in our history, technology has been neutral. It is a promising tool that could allow us to grasp an infinite future. But at this time, the entire development of these systems is in the hands of the globalist, super predators who have a lustful disdain and hate for humanity. 
Globalist social engineers openly talk about the population of the planet like we're little animals in petri dishes to be manipulated, to be controlled, to be tested upon. Foster children and U.S. military personnel have had chemicals, biologicals, and radiologicals tested on them for more than 60 years because the elite believe that they're nothing but unconscious animals. I'm asking humanity to realize that a very small group of inbred, unhappy, twisted, and wicked people have seized control of human development and are attempting to establish a total control system of technocratic surveillance and dehumanization. It is now that we must begin to struggle against their bureaucracy, fighting their 1984 system with liberty and freedom and enlightenment and truth. Until the levers of technological development are leveraged from the hands of the globalist, humanity has a very dark future. The real threats facing humanity are not the fake environmental threats that Al Gore and the UN bring you. They are unchecked cross-species genetic engineering. Tens of thousands of biotech companies, universities and governments randomly splicing viruses, bacteria from plants and animals and then injecting them into other animals. This is already giving rise to mutated viruses and bacteria and a irrevocable vandalization of the genetic code of the planet. High-tech chemical and most importantly biological weapons development. Unchecked nanotech, the artificial creation of black holes, antimatter weapons that the Air Force admits they've developed, and new viral vaccines coming out that re-engineer the brain by attacking certain ganglii systems so that you can no longer feel emotions. We've seen one of the biggest mutual funds, Fidelity Investments, come out and talk about synthetic biology. Within 50 years, we may have invented more organisms in the lab than we've identified in nature. It's synthetic biology, and it could be the defining technology of the 21st century. And how within just a few years, they're gonna overwrite every major life form on this planet without asking you. That's a trillion times what Monsanto does, planting their crops next to yours. Their crops then infect your crops, and they come and charge you with copyright infringement when they polluted your property. All of this is being rolled out now. We are under a massive and sustained offensive by the technocratic psychopath guild known as the New World Order to fully dominate and wipe out most of humanity so they can control the next phase of our development. The United Nations, Ray Kurzweil, all these different transhumanists openly say that they're not giving anybody a choice, that they're going ahead in this attempt to evolve humans and merge us with machines. We intend to create a new vector for civilization, aimed at constant human development and evolution. The brain is transplanted into an avatar B. Man receives new, expanded life. The era of neo-humanity. And they believe that they know what the outcome is going to be without even having a public discussion. They believe that they govern the future evolution, as they call it, of our species. That's why we're doing this news report, in the hope that people will look up from the dirt and the television programs and sitcoms and football games that don't matter, that are put there to distract you from the real world, the whole universe going on around you, so that we can have a real debate as a species about our future. And see that there is an entire universe around you of ideas, and that we can chart our future. We can chart our future. Can chart our future. I'm asking for this. I'm asking for this. If we don't respect our species, if we forget our ancestors and the lessons they taught us, and if we don't learn from the struggles they went through, we're not going to survive as a species. You see, we as humans have this instinctive feeling that we've been here forever. When we read the writings of Plato, written more than 2,000 years ago, or William Shakespeare 500 years ago, their words are spoken alive in our minds. This is communicating with people in the past. And like electricity, it gives us a clear connection to them and the present towards the future. That, my friends, is magic. And that's why our species is timeless. Why have all human societies going back thousands of years scraped their names on tree trunks or on cave walls? 
because there is a fundamental human need to communicate forward into the future. It's ingrained in us to teach those that come after us the experiences we had so that they don't relive the mistakes that we made. And so they will learn from the good things that we discovered. We communally share in the knowledge that our species has developed. This is what's different about mankind versus all the hundreds of thousands. Of all right, here is the conclusion of humanity's greatest secret. If you're a radio listener, see the full video report at Infowars.com. It's red link at the top. This will take us out until tomorrow. We'll be live on the radio, 12 noon Eastern, Infowars.com. Species has developed. This is what's different about mankind versus all the hundreds of thousands of species that have come and gone on this planet in its ancient history. We are able to change our environment. We are able to grasp that we're finite. And we are able to construct systems and languages and sciences of mathematics, just as we can decipher the hieroglyphs in Egyptian caves and know what they were thinking 4,000 years ago. We can go back 500 years ago to William Shakespeare. In Shakespeare's Hamlet, they are burying someone and accidentally dig into the grave of a man who had taken care of Hamlet when he was a child. And Hamlet, in awe, looks at the brow ridges and the face of the skull that was his childhood babysitter and says, I laughed at your jokes. I, I, you carried me on your shoulders a thousand times and now look at you. You're nothing but a skull. How could it be? You were, you were there full of life and everything and you're gone. You're gone forever. But he's not really gone forever because just as William Shakespeare's words continue on, your knowledge, discoveries you make are passed on. That's what's so amazing about humanity. We can argue all day if there's life after death. But I know one thing, we're alive and sentient right now. And ideas that we develop, art that we create, lives on forever. And even if you don't believe in God, look at the beauty and the majesty of the universe. The universe doesn't make junk. And so don't ever think you're garbage. Don't ever let the system make you feel insecure and hollow inside, hoping that you never advance in your hierarchy of needs. They wanna keep you stunted while they live and we sleep. While they are conscious, while we are in a dream state. The planet's social engineers openly talk about us as animals and they see the society they've constructed as an artificial habitat meant to keep us from ever discovering the wider real world. It's time to really get outside the box. It's time to realize the wonder that's all around you. If we go back to the Greek philosopher more than 2,000 years ago, Plato, he wrote a allegory or an analogy of people chained inside a cave. Their only reality is images dancing on a wall, a puppet show in front of a fire. And one of them is able to break out and go up to the surface and sees deer and the sun and the moon and the whole world and tries to come back and warn people. And they say, hey, shut up. We've got a lot invested in this mirage. We want the mirage, not the real thing out there. It is our job to try to break people out of this matrix and to see how incredible and magical this universe and this world is. And to realize that we have value, we're special. What do we see through the controlled corporate media? That humanity's a disease, that the world would be better off without us. Too many kids are what's making the planet worse. The human beings are a disease, a cancer of this planet. It looks like you've got a case of the humans. Bad humans. They multiply over 300,000 a day, consuming anything that crosses their path. The establishment is preparing us with a psychological race consciousness memory that we're trash and that we're bad and that we shouldn't have a survival instinct. Earth is just the start. Who knows what's next? They are openly preparing to release biological weapons to reduce the population. This is the real development, not sitcoms on television. 
the real world is going on around you while you're turning your life over to a television that is literally programming you. Think about what the social engineers feed us. Every television ad, every big blockbuster film has messages crammed into it. You have men going and fantasizing that only Batman or the Incredible Hulk could defeat threats, not the average person. That sports icons are all that matters and that we're all basically garbage and only this Madison Avenue Hollywood system matters when it is only a tiny part of the overall spectrum of life going on on this planet. And it's a facsimile, it's a prosthesis, it's a fake, it's a fraud. Consciousness is unspeakably incredible. The real world is an infinity more valuable and fulfilling than the fraud that is mainline television and all of these films and this dumbed-down culture that seeks to keep you shuttered inside the cave, to make you feel small and to make you feel like you need the images they project on the wall more than you need the real world waiting right up those steps on the surface. And even when you make it to the surface out of the cave, you're only here on this planet and outside of it is the larger cave. And still more, you must leave one box and then leave another and still leave another. This is the human experience. This is the electric magic and the wonderment of consciousness and being awake. The doors to the universe and the things we can't even imagine are standing open to us. Don't let their false paradigms and false roadmaps be injected like viruses into your mind. The dreams of your ancestors, the dreams of the universe, the dreams of everything wholesome and good flows like living water out of the space-time continuum. Beauty is all around us. The wind and the trees in the summer, the sunrise, moonset, the ocean, seagulls. And you were a child spraying a water hose up into the sky and looking at the droplets like they were jewels in the air. Your children, your grandmother, your grandfather, feeling that first gust of autumn wind on your cheeks, looking up and seeing the stars at night. Everything is a miracle. The fact that you can recognize beauty, the fact that you know when something is wholesome and good, shows that you recognize what is beautiful and wholesome in the universe. You resonate with the good, you recoil from the bad, and because the bad seizes control of the power structures so that it can unnaturally thrive and operate, you pull back saying, ooh, I don't wanna go there, I don't wanna resist them. But by doing that, you turn the world and the universe over to evil. We cannot allow the planet Earth to become a beachhead of the satanic forces that have bred here. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. And there is incredible beauty and creation and power and mission and destiny on this planet. This is an amazing place. And that's why the forces of evil are here as well. And we are in a struggle, not just for this planet, but in the universe around us. Think how far humanity has come in the last 6,000 years. Think of where we could go. As the Bible says, the ear has not heard, the eye has not seen what is in store for us. We are at the jump point for our civilization, for our species. Everything we do now will govern the future of human development forever. Humanity is only in an embryonic phase now. If we're able to continue our development, we are made in the image of the creator of the universe. We are creators. We are powerful. But now we've got to face the predators of our own species and the computers we've created in the final battle to decide if humanity will move to the next level, a type one civilization. And what is a type one civilization? A type one civilization can survive even if its home world is destroyed. That should be the prime goal of Homo sapiens sapien. What do you think your ancestors, if they could look into our dimension and our time today, would want? They would want us to survive and thrive and move into the future. That's all past generations wanted was for their children and progeny and their clan to live. 
That's the basic human imperative. And to do that, you've got to develop technologies, you've got to be passionate, you've got to be truthful, you've got to build, you've got to be strong. That is the launch pad for the next level of human development. So that's the question, will we become extinct like so many other species? We can go to space, we can create computers, we can theoritize quantum mechanics, Picasso, Beethoven, can we take control of our destiny? Can we have a species-wide debate about our system? Or is death of humankind all that's waiting in our future? That decision to a great extent depends on you. So the ball is in your court.